Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, it's been a little while since we streamed, but uh, Ian and I are back. How's it going? It's going all right. How you doing, Kevin? Yeah, not bad. Um, trying to bring the chat up on the stream, but our interface changed a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, shout out where you're from, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, so last stream, I know it's been a little while, but Ian and I were setting up a process to ingest data from the YouTube API. So that we can start to do some analytics on our live stream data and I guess like our video data too, but we're mostly interested in live stream data. And uh, today is meant to be like this part two where we start to talk about how to do something with this data. We started to get it into Postman, but we wanted to move it into like a Google spreadsheet so we can look at how to action it what videos are performing well and that kind of stuff but we have to do a, a little bit of i guess coding we're thinking um we we're talking a little bit before the stream on what we did last time because it's been a little while um but i think like the big thing that we had to figure out last stream was the google auth um which we kind of showed that it's a lot easier to work with now um I think like in the past when we first started at Postman, it, it wasn't the easiest to kind of get set up. It, it's more intimidating than it is actually challenging. But um, yeah, we, we used like, I think Postbot and that kind of made it a little easier. And we're going to try to rely on that a little bit today and see if that can do some of our coding for us. But um, I guess like, is there anything else you want to say before we dive into the In Case You Missed It, Ian? Um... No, I think uh, I think that'll be okay. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have to go back and like reset up some of the credentials and and try to figure out which credentials we used last time because uh, something's not working here on my end. So we'll 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 kind of like we're gonna kind of learn as we go. Uh, we're kind of exploring through some of these APIs uh, with Google. But like Kevin said, um, you know the 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 idea of Google OAuth is uh, it's a little intimidating, but it's not difficult. Um, so Postman tries to make it as easy as possible to just go in, add your credentials, and then like it'll auto refresh those tokens and so on for you. Um, and so it's just a question of how do you get those set up? There's a really great blog post from Debo uh, that we used last time on how to get started with uh, Google OAuth. So we'll we'll show off that blog post again. We'll kind of show um, you know what we were uh, what we were doing last time. <clears throat> as far as getting that set up and we'll kind of like recall some of this we're not gonna have to like rebuild it from scratch but i'm gonna have to play around a little bit with like the credentials make sure that uh that we're using the correct credentials to get access to our youtube uh analytics and, and all that kind of stuff so we'll uh we'll get there <laughs> we'll get there um yeah. by way of introduction i'm ian i'm a senior developer advocate here at postman um and uh yeah kevin you want to introduce yourself there too yeah, my name is Kevin Corbett, and I'm uh, the technical community manager here at Postman. Um, I run the Supernova program. So if you like live streaming, if you like giving talks, definitely reach out to me on Twitter or 
Google Postman Supernovas and apply. But um, yeah, I think we'll do a little bit of uh, an overview after this next segment on what we did last time, just to kind of catch up and also yeah. refresh for ourselves. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it'll be a, a fun stream. I see yep. hello from New York City. It's local to the area too. Yeah, um, good times. But yeah, go ahead. Let's, take it away uh, then. Yeah, let's go through uh, in case you missed it. So uh, we like to start all of our live streams with in case you missed it. We talk about like product updates and so on. We had a lot going on uh, since we last live streamed in it was a late August. So uh, mid September, yeah, mid September we had a, a release. So let's uh, let's go over and share my screen there, Kevin, and we'll talk about some of the stuff that uh, sure. that we've released. Um, so Postbot is now available. Um, we'll kind of take a look at that, um, kind of like where that's available in the interface and so on. You'll see down at the bottom of the interface, now you'll have this Postbot icon that should be in general availability. Uh, we've got pretty generous, like free uh, use of that, even on the free tier. You should have a, a pretty good use for that. Um, the other thing that we want to talk about that we released is the new proxy and interceptor. Uh, within Postman, it's a it's a separate download, but basically you can have this code basically watch any kind of network transaction happening on your application and catch what those API calls are. So if you're using like a desktop app or a mobile app or like an emulator uh, on your system and you want to try to capture those API calls, you can now check out the new and improved uh, system proxy and interceptor that'll basically watch those things and then it'll actually pull those in as collections into Postman and then you can continue to work with them from there. Um, and so we'll make sure that uh, that you have access to all of these blog posts. Looks like Kevin's dropping the links in there, so thanks for that. Um, happy to see uh, Victor in there, uh, folks from Poland. Welcome in, everybody. Let us know where you're from. Um, the other thing that we want to talk about is um, this is like the main release notes page that we kind of populate uh, whenever we do a major release. And one of the big things that we've released now is MQTT support. So if you're into Internet of Things, MQTT is, is basically a type of API that's like super low data transmission and, and so on. Uh, and it's meant for IoT devices. Like primarily it's, it's used in IoT. Um, it's probably not the only place that you could use it, but it's, that's the primary kind of use case for it. And we now support that inside of Postman as well. Um, and so our release notes will basically tell you a little bit more how to get into that. We've got more blog posts on it, um, and you can go find uh, more information about that in our learning center. Um, and then other improvements, we made some changes around like GraphQL uh, request variables and so on within uh, using JSON with that. So we've made a handful of GraphQL changes. We were actually at GraphQL Conf last month, and uh, we were talking to a lot of people about just some of the updates and, and so on that we've done there. Um, and let's see, what else? We're going to be at API World next week in California. Is that next week? Week after, I think. I think like that. that. Um, yeah, so we're actually going to be at API World, um, and uh, we were actually uh, pretty honored to receive this Best in API Management Award. So we're going to be uh, accepting that at API World. Um, so I'll be there hanging out. There's going to be a handful of other folks hanging out. So if you're going to be in San Francisco at this event, please come by our table and come say hi to us. Uh, we'd love to chat with folks. Um, it's a several-day event. So definitely come by and check that out. We've got a lot of stuff now on our blog. Like we're like the whole team, like it feels like half the company is writing blog posts. Everyone, yeah. It's great. We've got so much good content to share with everybody. Um, all the way from like introductory level, like what is an HTTP status code, um, all the way into like deep dives. Like I've, I've got a blog post recently on, you know, what is serverless and, you know, can we build a serverless API, stuff like that. We've got just tons and tons of blog content. So you definitely want to check those things out and, uh, and see what we've got new there. So we'll, we'll kind of, we'll kind of keep that part short because, uh, Kevin and I want to kind of get back into this analytics and automation flow. Um, like I said, we're going to have to kind of have a bit of a do over on, uh, on some of how we're accessing some of this stuff and uh, kind of refresh our own brains because it has been a minute since we uh, since we touched this last and it looks like my credentials are not working so i'm gonna have to go figure out like what do i need to do to go get my credentials get those in the environment properly so we can access the right data so um cool kevin anything else that you want to add about like uh, like new stuff that we've added or changes that uh that have happened no i mean i think like the best 
place to kind of our best places to keep up with what's going on or for sure our twitter account we're um posting a ton of really good stuff there threads and educational stuff but also upcoming events like ian's showing on the forums um i think we got a, we got a lot of stuff there. coming up so yeah if you're gonna be if you're gonna yeah. be at any of these events like i'm gonna be at all things open with joyce uh this coming weekend uh into early next week uh, and then I'm back from that for a couple of days. I'm going to be out at TwitchCon. I'm back from that for a day. And then I'm out at API World. Uh, we've got a, just, you know, a whole bunch of the DevRel team are, are traveling. That's also why we're kind of reducing our live streams, uh, just because Q4 is a really busy time for us. But uh, definitely come check out all the events. If you happen to be at any of these events, please, please come by and say hi to us. Uh, we love meeting folks. Get some and, posts and uh, swag. Yeah, for sure. We're we're constantly giving away those socks and and stickers and all kinds of fun stuff. We got hats and water bottles and all kinds of like. Uh, have you seen the new mug that we have, Kevin? Yeah, that and like the rubber duck. I want to get the rubber duck. Yeah, we got <laughs> we got the new we got the new postman mug. Okay, so this thing this thing's pretty great. We got some um, good swag now. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, we've always had good swag, but we've always uh, had good swag, yeah. especially the bobblehead. Yep, for sure. Yeah, the, new those bobbleheads. Bob, those now bobbleheads. Too. Yeah, the new ones, and they're still hand painted, so um, they're still a pretty rare item. If you happen to uh, come by one of our booths, uh, we usually do like a raffle or something to win a bobblehead. Uh, you know, just let us, you know, scan your uh, your conference badge or you know whatever the event is, and we'll definitely uh, get you in the drawing for one of those bobbleheads. So awesome. Well, let's uh, let's dive back into this thing. So last time we were creating a YouTube job that was basically like go collect our analytics. Um, but for some reason, my credentials are not working. So it says this entry or this entity already exists, but trying to fetch that, uh, that job is actually failing for us. So we're getting an error here when we're trying to go back and fetch those reports. So I need to go look at what that last job ID is. Is it, the it, last it's... job ID updating properly? Like if there's an error when we're trying to create that job, is it maybe not storing the last ID or something correctly? That's a good question. So when we ran this last time, we got that job ID and I had written that into a variable. Right. And so it's just trying to use that variable. So what I'm thinking is that it's something with the credential because the error that we're getting back here is indicating that I don't have permission to access this. So yeah. I just need to go back and double check like what was the project that we were building this under, uh, which credentials do I have access to? Do we have an up-to-date token and, and things like that? Um, so let's, uh, let me, I need to do that off screen cause we don't want to share the credentials for this, but, uh, I'm going to, I'll basically kind of describe what I'm doing. So I'm on the, um, I'm on the Google cloud console page. And again, I can't really show this because I don't want to leak their credentials and, and give people access to stuff they shouldn't see. Um, but basically if you go through Debo's blog post, maybe Kevin, if you can share that one again. Yeah, um, if we go through, link. let's see how to access. Uh, so this is Debo's blog post. So basically, I'm going through. Um, I created a, a project. So I've, I've pulled up the previous project that we had, and from there, uh, we've gone through. We've set all this stuff up. We've got all the all the redirects and so on for OAuth to get our token, um, and then we've enabled the Google Sheets API as well as the YouTube API, and then we've gotten to the point. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so we're at the point now where we're actually trying to create the credential and just making sure that we have the correct credential. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to see if I can create like a new set of credentials. Um, so I'm just going to delete the old one. And so it's asking me to confirm by typing in the word delete. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to create brand new credentials here. So I'm going to create a new OAuth client ID. Application type is going to be a web application. And then we have to put in the redirect URIs. And there are two different redirect URIs that we have to put in that we kind of talk about um, right in here in, in the blog post. Yep. So we have to set up both of these. One's for the browser callback and one's for the desktop app, just in case you're using like one or the other. Um, by adding both of these uh, in the credentials, then you'll have access to this both in the desktop app as well as the web application. So I'm going in and I'm going to go create those. 
and it gave me a new client ID and a new client secret. So I'm going to go into my environment over here, go to Google YouTube, and I'm, I've got these masks, so you won't be able to see what they are, but I've got a new client ID. So I'm going to delete this old one. Just make sure that I'm pasting this in. And, and again, we we're using the current variable and um, or current value in our environment variable. It's more yeah. secure. So we've got this set to secret so that as soon as we type anything in here, it masks it with dots. But because I'm not putting anything inside the initial value, it's not going to synchronize this to Postman's cloud. And this current value is only stored within this browser. So if I switch from the browser over to the desktop app, these values won't be set the same. Um, and so it's a way of like keeping your credentials really, really safe. Um, now, if I was on a public workspace and I had these things, well, actually, we are in a, in a public workspace. If I had put something inside initial value here, then anybody that could access that workspace could come in, open my environment, and unmask what I had in here, even though it's marked as secret. You see this little eyeball icon over here. You would be able to click on that eyeball icon and actually see what that value is. And so we don't want to put something in initial value here. So this is like my number one security tip. If you're dealing with API keys and Postman, you want to save them in an environment, make sure your type is set to secret and that you do not set anything in initial value, only use current value. Now, the downside to that is if you switch browsers or you switch to the desktop app, you're going to have to save this in each of those environments. Uh, like not to confuse the idea of like the Postman environment here, but like these current values are only stored within that application. So your browser, it's only storing it within that browser. If you switch to the desktop app, it's going to have its own sort of memory space where it's storing these current values. So I think that's just be careful. Kind of we're redoing this right now too. <laughs> yeah. So let's see if we can access this now. So we'll go access that job status, and we're still getting an error with that. So something went wrong while running your scripts. Oh, I need to probably go get a new token. So we're going to go back. We click on the collection. We go to authorization. And then we still got everything in here that we needed from last time. This is the old token. Um, all of this stuff should still be the same. None of this will change. It's going to pull these values out of my environment. I'm not going to hover over these because it'll show on the screen what it is. Um, so I'm not going to hover over those. But if we come down here and say, get a new access token, it's basically popping up a little browser thing for me saying, who are you? Which Google account are you logging in as? Um, and it's asking me to confirm that we want access to Google Drive files and YouTube content. And then it's going to say, you know, okay, we're automatically going to close this for you. And so, and here's our token. So now we've got a new token. Is that going to give us access to this? So if we try to create this again, it says that that entity already exists. So it knows that this account has already said, like, go set up this daily job or whatever to go pull these statistics. So we know that we're our, like we've already got a job kind of to handle that. What That's we don't have the is that API doesn't allow us to kind of request that on demand. We have to request that they fetch that for us daily, right. like, and we, we provide whatever that time frame is. Right. And the last time that we did this, we got a job ID and we wrote that into uh, a variable here as well within our collection. Right. And so what we're trying to do now is we're trying to say like, hey, go back and get that job ID. Because the job ID the then job. will give us like all the daily breakdown of, you know, these are all the daily files that it's it's basically compiling these YouTube uh, reports on a daily basis. But it's still giving us a permission error here. So something went wrong. What did it say? Something went wrong while running your scripts. Check the console. I have a feeling if I check the console, it's going to show us... Uh, uh, actually, no, that's just a problem with the for each. So maybe that actually worked? No, it, it didn't work. So... Up. Or yeah, so the test no. Yeah, the, yeah. the tests aren't running because the the payload that's coming back isn't isn't what it's expecting to see. But we can see the job ID being pulled up. Um it's just not giving us what what we're supposed to be sending over here. So um we see the token that it's building here, but again that token is kind of short-lived. I can go back and refresh that at any time. But Google doesn't think that that token is good for the data for the job ID that we're trying to fetch. Um, so the only thing I can think of is let's see if there's a get endpoint for jobs and see if we can get that job ID again. So I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to duplicate this request and I'm going to change this to be a get request. 
and we'll just call this like um, get running jobs. Let's see if this will give us that ID just to confirm that that's the ID that we're supposed to be calling. So we got an HTML page. So the nice thing about getting HTML is we can come in and we can use the visualize or the preview and actually see what this looks like. Uh, it's just a little animation. That's not helpful. Um, so we're getting an HTML page. Your client has issued a malformed or illegal request. That's all we know. <laughs> so we got, we got a 400 error. Um, so it looks like there's no endpoint to go get a list of those jobs. It looks like there is. I'm on there. I'm going to post a link to our chat that we can maybe okay. pull up. But um, there is a way to list the current jobs. And it seems like we're using the right endpoint. It's get and then it's jobs. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's make sure that we're calling this like base URL of YouTube right. reporting and so on. Um, so it's YouTube reporting.googleapis.com slash v1 slash jobs. Oops, where did that other... A lot of tabs open. There it is. Yeah, let me close off these other tabs. We won't need them now. All right, so... This is the domain that we're calling, and we are calling slash v1 slash jobs. Um, authorization, uh, it's using OAuth 2, which we are passing. Um, it looks, oh, that's right. We have to give it a scope. So uh, when, we're, when we're building the OAuth token, we have to give it a list of scopes. So let's go take a look at that again. So when we have the Google OAuth live stream, this is our collection. We click on authorization. And down inside here, we have this list of scopes, and this is what we're allowed to actually access. So when we go get that token, we're saying these are the things that we want to access with this token. And we just have to make sure that we're setting the right YouTube uh, scope in here. So these are space delimited. And it looks like it's YT analytics read only. So we already had that scope in there. We had one so, suggestion on Twitch about um, maybe not sending the body. I don't know if that would really cause yeah, me, it, but let me double check that. So be worth a try. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it changed. I mean, <laughs> oh wait, let's get the running jobs. Yeah. So now we can change this. Oh wait, shoot, it's all in the wrong spot. Um. Let's go back. I need to put that body back. I'm on the wrong tab here. Uh, we need to go back to create a YouTube job, get running jobs. This is where we needed to do that work. Right. So this is going to be just slash jobs. We're doing a get request. We're not going to send the body on this one. Would we just hit that tick to none then? Um, we probably could. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there's our job ID. So it's actually a very different job ID than what we had saved before. So it could be that that job ID changed over time because what we had in our environment before didn't work. So, uh, yeah. Big thanks to uh, Cuddly Wolf seventy eight for the uh, for the idea there. Uh, all right. So let's go back and we'll take a look at that. So within the collection, we had a collection variable where we were storing this. So this was our last job ID. So let's go paste that back in here. And then when we go get the job status using that ID. All right. So, hey, we got data back. All right. All fixed. Right. <laughs> Caught back well, up. We're, we're, we're back to where we were uh, several weeks ago. All right. So yeah. we're at the point now where we have these download URLs. And so what we what we need to do now is we need to say, go get these URLs using our OAuth token. And that's basically what this code was going to do here is basically we're going to we're going to parse this JSON data and then say, go get that report dot download URL. So we're saying for for each of the things that we have, um, we want to go look at the reports in here. Um, and then, so we have our JSON data dot reports, that's going to be this array. And we're saying for each of those things, we're going to just call that thing report. And so it's going to basically capture this, this object right here and say, okay, based on that, now we want to go get the report dot download URL. 
And we want to pass the header with our current OAuth token. So we need to make sure that that bearer token is going to work okay. So we can actually go fetch that URL. And if that works okay, then what do we do? So at this point, now we need to go figure out, okay, well, what does it look like when we actually fetch that file? How do we sort of extract the data out of that? And then uh, push that into um, push that into a spreadsheet. So this call here, uh, let's go back and double check what this one is doing. I think this was actually... I'm just going to pull up one of these reports and see what this looks like. So I'm just going to replace this and send this so that we can see what this data looks like. All right, so in this case, we had no data at all. So that's not very helpful. No. All right, let me let me close some of these other tabs here. Um, so we've got that one. I can close those tabs. All right, and I'm going to save these other things here. All right, so let's go find a different file and see if we have some data in here. And just to like clarify for people, like we're creating a YouTube job that's going to refresh or request data on, I believe, all of our videos, right? And then... Yeah. And so this, this should be coming up with a report every day yeah. of, you know, which of our video IDs got traffic, you know, what did we see from them and so on. So I'm going to go all the way back to August. I just scrolled like way down, see if we can get like a different, uh, a different file from back in August. Because because we haven't live streamed in a while, I think it, maybe it's just not finding that data. No, it's not giving us any data at all. So I wonder if that job is even running anymore. There, there was something in the documentation that they only keep files for a certain amount of time. Right. So it could be that we can't go back more than 30 days, even though it's saying like, this is a download URL for something that's more than 30 days old. But it trying to be, fetch... Isn't it fetching like our... You, oh, because this is on... Is this the Postman account or your account still? I'm trying to fetch it through the Postman account, but I'm, I'm also an admin on our YouTube yeah. account. So I should be able to access these reports either way, but I made the credentials... Videos. Yeah, I made the credentials... I made the credential using the main Postman account. So, right. uh, but yeah, for some reason, these are coming in as empty. So that's not helpful. Hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, it's maybe, <laughs> okay, in the URL, it's V1 Media Channel in all caps. Do we have to update that word channel? Um, on which one? In the current page right now. Mm -hmm. As part of that URL, it's media channel. Does channel have to be changed to something? Like, is that a um, variable? I don't think so, because that's actually the URL that that that's we get right from us. Google. Yeah, we see. Sorry, I, we, right. I guess you can't you can't really see it because our, our pictures see, yeah. are in the way. But but we can see like channel right here. We see that that's what's what's coming in that URL. So I'm literally copying and pasting this, right. saying like, go get that that file. Um. What if I try? It's strange, if it's I, formatted that way. If I try and just pull that up in a browser, it says I'm unauthenticated because I'm not passing right. that bearer token to go download it. So we know that it's at least authenticating to try to download that file, and we are getting a response back. It's just there's no data in that file. Hmm. So there's something going on with the actual job where the job's not giving us back the right data. Um. So that's interesting. So if we go back and we say, go get a list of jobs, there's only one job running, and this was the channel combined A2, which is what we were trying to create over here, was our channel combined A2. And that's like a whole bunch of combined stats. So okay. it seems now that there's a job running, it's running every day, but for some reason now these files are empty. So that's not going to be very helpful for us to actually go extract data uh, oh. to put into a, into a spreadsheet. So it's a lot of nothing going on. Um, I'm looking at our last video where channel was there, um, trying to compare mm -hmm. what we did before. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're we're calling all the same endpoints. Like this, this yeah. is this is the same workspace Nothing's and whatever changed. that we were in before. The only thing that we updated was the credential, um, but we did this using the Postman credential last time as well. So it's the same Google project. All right. we did was create a new credential, but it's still on the same account. We still see the existing job. But remember, the job ID changed. So there, there might be something in there where the job that we're trying to access 
uh, Did, when we do like go get the job status, that job ID changed. Oh, yeah. Wait, did we change it to the right one? Because we have an initial current value. And a current is the value EE value. one. Right. Did I set the right? Because if we go back and we look at the collection variable, I updated the current value. So it should be using right. this one. I'm going to go update the initial value just in case. So that was our last job ID. That's what we called it. It was last job ID. So if we come over here, yeah, it's last job ID. We see it's set to the EE0, whatever, on that. If we send that over. So it's giving us the same files. It gives us that job ID. Right. And we see that it's it's doing the whole history of files here. So, I mean, it's going back a long time. It's going all the way back to August 24th. Um, but when we try to access that individual file, say, like, go get me that actual single file, there's no data in that file. So mm -hmm. it, it looks like that job is running, but it's not actually collecting any data for us. So that seems to be like a YouTube problem. Maybe. All right. Well, that's, uh, let's see what we can do from here. Uh, so what I was trying to build in this test code was, was to show people like, here's how we can actually tell Postman to send another request saying, go grab that download URL, make sure you're passing our OAuth token. And then if we get a response back, what do we do? And that's where we were going to like break this down line by line, grab that chunk of data and then push it into a Google spreadsheet. So the other thing that we can do here is we can say like, go create a new spreadsheet. Um, so let's go, let's just pretend that we've got that data for now. Uh, we can call this endpoint now because we've enabled this API within our account. We've added that scope to our OAuth token that gives us access to uh, the Google Drive. Now, when we enable the permissions on this, there was, there was a different permission that you could set for, for Google Drive that says, I only want to be able to access files that I create with this token and not, or I can access like any file on Google Drive. And we want to make sure that that's set to like, I want to create a file and then I only want to edit that file. I don't want to have like wide sweeping permission to go do everything. Otherwise, our IT uh, group is going to be calling my phone going, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> So we can go create a spreadsheet. This should give us back a spreadsheet ID. Um, so that works. Um, and, it, and it comes up as an unti untitled spreadsheet. Um, and it gives us some basic information about like what font is being used and so on. So there's not a lot of helpful information from here. But I can take that spreadsheet ID. Let's go save that as a collection variable here as well. Um, oh, it looks like we did save that last time as well. So we'll go make a new spreadsheet. And then to push data into that spreadsheet, um, what we want to do here is we want to find like what is the, um, what do we call it, worksheet ID? Um, is we want to go find the URL endpoint that says like go append the data to this existing spreadsheet. We're going to have to figure out like what do we actually need to send in the body for that to happen. Right. Because if I try to send this over now, um, so we get a message here just saying like the requested URL was not found. Okay, so this this URL isn't valid. So we need to go figure out what this is supposed to be. I didn't save my work here either. So maybe it didn't know what that workspace was. So come back over here. We'll try and send that again. Now we get the same error. All right, so now let's go look up. Um, let's go look up the Sheets API. So we'll go look up the Google Sheets API. And what we want to do is we want to update a spreadsheet by pushing some data into that. So we, we've already created the spreadsheet, and that was this endpoint. Um, and again, they'll give you like code snippets and uh, some of these uh, pages on Google. They'll also give you like a, like a cool little, you know, go build it live kind of thing yeah. where they'll show you some of the form fields over here of like what you want to do and what you want to build. So we've already got this thing built, and it's coming back with, um, with a file. So now we can read and write individual uh, spreadsheet values 
which I think is what we want. And inside of here, so we can do a single range, we can do a multiple range, or we can do this append call. And I'm pretty sure this append is what we're going to need because if we're accessing multiple files, we just want to kind of concatenate all of these together into a single spreadsheet so that later we can say, okay, go into that spreadsheet and build a chart. And this is where it's kind of coming into this API Explorer where we can say, okay, what was that spreadsheet ID? What's the range? Um, and then our, our pictures are in the way here, but we can say like, go include these values and there's some different options. And you can actually run this and execute this. There's a little execute button right under my head. Uh, Kevin, can you pull our pictures down under the browser? Yeah, let's do that. It'll be a little bit easier to there see. Yeah. Um, so it's got the, like this whole like try this method kind of thing where you can put in the spreadsheet ID and then uh, the range, which, you know, we can say I want to store everything starting at A1 through, um, you know, um, the A is the column. So we could just say like ZZZ1, like we don't know how many columns are going to be in here. Although we could probably look at the output that we got from getting this one report and looking at the response. So if we go call this and we see the response, we could kind of see here like, oh, there's maybe, what, two dozen fields here. Um, but this will basically allow you to kind of play with their API like built into uh, the web page because you're already authenticated to them. Now I'm, I'm logged in as me, not the main Postman account. So it won't work if I put in the Postman uh, spreadsheet ID here. It won't, it won't give me permission to do that. Um, but it, it's, it's one thing I actually really like about Google's uh, API site is you can go in and you can kind of play with the API right within their API just by putting these things in. Then there's this execute thing at the bottom. Um, okay, so let's close this off and just take a look at what we need to do here. So there's a spreadsheet ID and there's a range value. We need to pass those in as parameters. Um, and so it looks like they're going to come in as URI parameters here. So we have sheets.googleapis.com v4 spreadsheets. Then we pass in our spreadsheet ID, and then we have like a range parameter here that we're going to have to actually make part of the URI or the URL, um, and it's going to be a post operation. So if we come over here and we say push this into here, um, we already have the sheets base in here. So sheets.google or googleapis.com slash v4 spreadsheets slash worksheet. But then there were some other parameters that we had to put in here. So it looks like we had slash values, slash range, append. So I'm going to grab just this part here, and I'm going to paste that on the end of this. So it looks now that we need to actually define a range. And what we can do here is Google gave us like one set of curly brackets around this. If I put a second set of curly brackets around it, now it's going to be, it's basically the handlebars syntax now. Um, that we can build our own variable for like where we want to append this. What was interesting though is the last time that I played around with this Google Sheets API is when you do the append, we could tell it every time like start appending in row one and it would basically scan through the document until it found an empty row and then it would start appending. And so it kind of kept track on its own of where it last left off or it would scan through the spreadsheet, find that empty row and then it would start appending that data. Um, but if you ever went in and like cleared out a row of data, then it would it would kind of scan down and, and see that empty row, that one empty row, and go, oh, this is where I need to start appending data, and it would overwrite anything else underneath that. Um, That's so not the ideal. other, yeah, it's not very ideal for sure. The other thing that we could do is um, since we're parsing the data, when we read the file over here, we could parse how many rows there are. And just keep track of a variable and say, I'm injecting 500 rows. Therefore, the next time I do this append, I need to start at 501. So whatever that last row ID was, I want to add one to that and just append at that point. So we can just set a range uh, variable here. Let's do that in, the co in a collection variable as well. And we're just going to call this range. And we'll just call this like um, A1 through ZZ. Um, yeah, we'll just do like row one and we'll see if we can actually append this data in here. Do we have to give it like an end range? Um, well, that is that is kind of, or sorry, it should be ZZ1, not colon one. So the, this kind of is a range. Like if you wanted to go from like A, 
like all of column A, all of column B, and you had like 10 rows, then you could say, I want to go from A1 to B10. And that would then, then that range becomes both column A and B from rows one through 10. We, oh, okay. Yeah. I see the 10, right? Um, and so, um, what we could do here is just say, you know, we don't know how many rows there are going to be. We know there are approximately like maybe two dozen fields. So we could just do a Z. I'm going to do ZZ just in case, but I'm going to tell it to always use a range of just row one and see whether it's going to like scan and like right. put that data in there. So I got to make sure that we put that range in properly. Let's save that. And we're here. Now we need to know what the data needs to look like in the body here when we send that over to the worksheet. Is it is it expecting CSV data? Um, like what is it actually expecting when we send this over? Um, so we have the range. Uh, the other query parameters, value input, how it should be interpreted, how it should be inserted. So it looks like there's an insert data option. Let's go look at that. So we can overwrite or we can insert rows. Um, overwrite the new data, overwrites existing data in the areas that it's written. So that area is the range that we give it. Um, insert rows, it's just going to insert new rows for that. So it sounds like that's probably going to be a good one to add as, a, as an option. So insert. Data. So insert data option, and this is a parameter. So we're going to set it to that value. So let's go in and we'll add that as well. So insert data option. So we're going to say, uh, let's add this as a parameter here. So insert data option, and we have to capitalize it correctly here. So it was lowercase i and then uppercase d and o on data option. And we're going to set that value to be insert rows. Uh, let's see, what else do we have in here? Include values in response. That's basically like, as it responds, do we want to see the, the data come back? Um, and then the request body, the body contains an instance of value range. And then we see the response coming back and it'll tell us like what got updated. So let's go take a look at what the request body should look like. So again, it's a post operation. We're going to be sending data over. So let's go take a look at value range. Um, so we have range of which is our string. So that's going to be our A1, Z1. Major dimension, we'll have to take a look at what that dimension is going to be. And then a values array. And so it looks like uh, each of these things is going to be another array of data. So we'll take a look at that and see. So it's an array of list values. So the data that was read or to be written, it's an array of arrays. Okay. So we're going to have to, so that was one of the other things that we were going to have to figure out when we read the data in from those files, it's coming in as comma delimited, uh, like a CSV data format. And we would basically have to turn this into an array of strings. So we would have to say, like, go split on the comma, turn each of these things into a separate string, put all of those into an array, and then append that array into the body that we're going to send over here. So let's go take a look at what that's going to be over here. So we have the JSON representation. I'm just going to copy and paste this into here. And it's asking us for that range again, even though we've got the range in the URL, it looks like we're going to have to put the range in here as well. Um, Cuddly Wolf says you can leave off the row number on the range for the end of the data. So you can just say A2 colon J. Oh, okay, great. So we don't have to tell it that that range is actually going right. through like row one. We can leave that row off. But what's interesting is we have to repeat the range inside the body here. Um, so if we just do range, we'll see whether it's going to pick that up as our as our variable or not. We might have to put quotes around it. We'll see whether we can actually interpret this. Are we going to say something? I think we just have to change the type at the. I can't think of what that's called from text to JSON. Yep. Um, and then major dimension, we'll take a look at what that is, and then we'll look at our values. So I'm just going to build like, my own array of values here just to see that we can, you know, build what we want. So we'll just put like Evan and Ian, and let's put Lee Wolf 78. 
And we'll have to take a look at what this major dimension is. So let's go take a look at what Cuddly Wolf was saying. On this variable, it looks like we don't have to add the row on this. Uh, we just can we can just tell it like what the last cell is, so we don't have to necessarily put that on there. So we'll try that. We'll give that a shot. Um, so this will be one array. Let's do a second array of other usernames. So I'm just going to pull out some other names from uh, from chat here. So it looks like C H R I S T I A L and Chickish. Let's see. Name. Um, I just grabbed some random names out of our out of our chat. So appreciate everybody hanging out in chat with us today, uh, watching us go through this. So, uh, all right. So now we just have to figure out what this dimension is going to be. So, what is this major dimension going to be all about? So the dimension is the operation. So in this case, we're telling it operate on the rows of a sheet or on the columns of a sheet. In this case, we kind of want to apply to both. So do we leave that as unspecified? No, it says that's the default, do not use. So does that mean we can just leave it empty and not specify it? Or do we have to specify it? Um, Cuddly Wolf is suggesting that we set it to rows. So let's do that. Oh, yeah. So it's when we're adding new data, it's adding it as like an, an individual row is each new, I guess, array or value. Where if we set that to columns, then it'd be adding them that way. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so what we need to do now is I need to go see if I can open this worksheet ID and then see if I can pull that into a tab so that we can actually um, uh, view like what's happening. So when we run this, we can actually see whether it inserts that data. So let me um, let me go open that Google document. So give me give me a moment while I do that offline here. If uh, anyone has questions, feel free to ask in chat. We can see uh, on all the platforms we're on. All right, so we have our entitled spreadsheet. Uh, let me go check the spreadsheet ID, 1PYK. 1PYK, okay, cool. Let me see, yeah, so I can pull that in here. So this is, got it. So this is our work, uh, sorry, this is our spreadsheet ID here. And so this is the spreadsheet. So if I go over to this tab and run this code, hopefully we'll see our names show up on these, these six cells right here. We should see those names kind of appear in here. Let's go see what happens when we run this. All right, value input option is required but not specified, and it's an invalid argument. So it's required, but we didn't specify value input option okay a parameter it looks like that was one of the parameters that we need so let's go take a look at that um go back into the page value input option so how should the data be interpreted that's what we included in the body i guess we need it as a parameter as well yeah so we'll just say it's going to come in as raw data uh, shouldn't be parsed and stored at it as right. is. So we'll set that value input. Uh, so value input option. So it's going to be another query parameter here. So go back to params. And it's called value input option. And we'll just say raw. Right, we'll save that. We'll send that over. All right. So it tells us it updated two rows and three columns worth of data and updated a total of six cells. If we come over here, there's all our names. Cool. So that worked. So what I'm curious now is if I resend this, is it going to overwrite or is it going to find that first empty row and keep appending it? So let's send that again. It looks like it, it, tells it shows us, the range. Yeah. It shows it shows the range and it looks like now it went to A3 through C4. So that makes it look like it actually found that first empty row and appended from there. And now we can see that again and again. So if I come over here and I just mash send a bunch of times, then we see our names showing up here several times. So what I just want to kind of show. Yeah, I want to show like what'll happen if we if we set an empty row in here. What's going to happen? Um, so let me let me do an offset row here because we start with Kevin, Ian, and Cuddly World. Cuddly oh, it should have been Cuddly Wolf. My apologies. Uh, let's go back over to body. We'll correct your your username over here. Sorry about that. Um, if I send this now, 
we can see it actually appended down at the bottom. Okay. Oh, no. No, it didn't. A, well, here it said A5, but here it said A11. So it actually did append down at the bottom. So it, that empty row mm -hmm. thing didn't happen anymore. It still remembered where it last left off and it only appended there. So this is good news for us. So we know exactly like what's coming in here. So what I think we could probably do is figure out um, like this first range of values. Um, we could probably just pass in the CSV header. So we'll at least have that right. in our spreadsheet. Um, and then, but we're not getting any data out of the YouTube files. So that's so, that's the main concern here. Why aren't we getting data anymore? I've been trying to think about that. We're able to specify which report we're sending. Are we sending the most recent report that's maybe not completed yet? Can we select an older one? I tried pulling up several different ones. So if we look right. at the, um, so this was... Yeah, if we go up to the very, very top here. So this was as of the 12th at 3 a.m. Right. So that was today at 3 a.m. And it was kind of the previous 24 hours. Mm. And if we um, if we pull up this file, we're here to say, go get that report and send that over. It's also coming up empty. So, right. okay, let's go grab the day before. So on the 11th from you know, 4.30 a.m. So if we go grab this one, I think I grabbed a, an extra quote on here. Send that over. That file is also empty. So for some reason, whatever this job is that we're telling YouTube to do, these files are coming back empty. There there was a restriction. Uh, I remember seeing this in the, in the uh, YouTube documentation that when you tell it to go create the job, it's keeping the files, but it only keeps the files for like 30 days. Right. Um, and, that, and that was something fairly new that they were doing as a kind of a breaking change um, that when we're getting this bulk data, this was, or sorry, it's 60 days okay. um, instead of 180 days. But we're not getting anything back. We've got like a, a million views in the last 48 hours. <laughs> so yeah. There should be data there. Right, right. Did we really get a million views? Like eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Nice. Go us. Not, not to brag, but <laughs> yeah. No, we'll brag. Go ahead and brag. <laughs> we put a lot of effort into into making these yeah. videos. So, um, so that's that's Check concerning because YouTube. when because when we when we did our live stream back in August, we actually saw some data coming back in yeah. those files, um, but for some reason now we're not getting any data. Um, so that's that's kind of a concern here so um we can try to figure out what to do we can maybe try and tell it to do a different kind of job so the job that we were doing here we were doing this combined a2 the problem is is if we tell youtube like hey go start this new job it basically doesn't kick off until later tonight to grab the last 24 hours worth of data yeah. and so even though we say like go start this job it'll give us back a job id right away but there's not going to be any data in that job until tomorrow and so we can't really demonstrate that on a live stream when we did this back in august we kind of cheated and actually started this job like a couple of days before our last live stream so that when we came in and said hey go get us the list of running jobs go get us the list of files there were actually some files there to see um but for some reason they're coming up empty so not sure why uh we know that the credentials are working um, and the webinars account should have access to those statistics because that's kind of the main YouTube account for Postman, if I remember right. Yeah. So why can't we actually get the stats? Why are those files empty? So when you I'm, log I'm, in on YouTube, usually you have like your the Google account. And then the yep. brand account, and we have the brand account for YouTube. Is that maybe right? Because so that's that webinars. Was, yeah, so that's our webinars account. So I, I I made the the Google project using the webinars account, which is also our primary like YouTube admin account. Like that's our main admin account. I'm also an admin, mm. but I made the the project credentials for what we're showing today, the Google OAuth, uh, using our webinars account. 
So that should be why, that should have access to everything. Yeah. I don't think webinars is able to see the YouTube account. You don't think so? I thought it did. I don't think so. Yeah, Postman. You might have to authenticate as oh. Ian and then select the brand account. But if I no, oh, that's you do that's switch probably... account again, it may not show it because yeah, it's that's associated with Ian, right? Because I'm an admin on our YouTube channel, right? So if I, so what do we do then? Um, I think we just have to refresh like our token, like the credentials. So when you go to that OAuth screen, when you're logging in, sign in as Ian and it'll give you the option for Postman. Okay. Because the, um, there's two YouTube channels associated with your email, the brand account for Postman and then your personal one. Right. The problem there then is that the that OAuth token is going to give us a different Google spreadsheet, which is fine. Right. We just create another Google spreadsheet, um, and then we can just store the uh, the spreadsheet ID that comes from from that. So okay, let's uh, let's go do that. So we'll click on here. We'll go to auth. We'll get a new access token. So you're saying I should pick my name instead. I would say your name, and then it would give you a second option to select either Ian or Postman. Should. At least that's how it works usually with my channel, where I log in and it has me select my name or my brand account. So if I come in here and I look at Postman Analytics Automation for my project, it's at, and I click on my Google account. Okay, choose your account or a brand account. Okay, so I'll pick Postman YouTube. Um, that can only be used within its organization, so that didn't work. So let me start that again. So I'll pick my account. I'll pick my account again and allow, proceed, use that token. So now if I come in here and say, go get all my running jobs, there are no running jobs. There are not. As, as me, as me, right. right? Because it's not looking at the yeah. main Postman account. And so it's not coming back with anything. So that's that's why I was saying like, because we, we started all of this and saying like, as Postman, go access all right. these analytics because the main Postman account has access to everything where I may not. Um, so I was I was initially doing the access token as the webinars team, but you're saying the webinars team doesn't actually have access to uh -huh. like any any of the the analytics. All right, well that's why those files are blank. But what's interesting is we have access to actually see the list of files. Is just when we try to call those files, they're empty. I'm curious why that one has running jobs though, and it has. Like actual reports, just they're empty. Right. Well, I mean, this is again, this is the account that we started a month ago when we did our last live stream. Well, a little over a month ago, month and a half right. ago now. Gosh, um, is I actually started on this account to say like, go start that job because we had to do it a couple of days ahead of time and we wanted mm. to have some data there. And so if you go back and watch the old YouTube account, you'll see, oh yeah, there's actually only a couple of days worth of data because we had just started that job. Um, and I think- When we looked at the report, it had data in it. It wasn't just returning like the, the headers. It had data in it, but now I'm also thinking, uh, because I was doing some of this on my personal account, I wonder if I was uh, I wonder if I was showing like, oh, something didn't work. Like I seem to recall like something didn't work on the Postman account. So I switched Maybe. over to my, per my personal account and we were able to see some stuff. That could um, be it. If that's what we were pulling up instead. But I'm still kind of curious, like when we use, oops, I don't want to get another token. Um, so we have that token. We can go get a list of running jobs. We see that job ID. We can go get the status of it. 
We just don't have access to the actual analytics. Is there something that we can do from an administrative point of view to say webinars account does have access to the actual data? But because Google is basically generating these files overnight, I don't think we'd see any data in the files until tomorrow anyway. Even if we were to go make a change now to say, go give the webinars account access to that analytics data, it, like it's not going to like magically populate these files because these files are like statically made uh, to access. But we have access to the files. They're just empty. Um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking if we, if we were to try to figure out from an administrative point of view, like let's go populate these files or give the webinar account access to the analytics to populate these files, that's not going to happen until tonight to show up tomorrow. Yeah. So I think, I think that's probably about as far as we're going to get today, unfortunately. Um, but we've got kind of the idea of the whole workflow here kind of built out now, where once we have access to that data, we can basically automate in here, like um, this code would basically say, go fetch that file. And when we get that data, how do we parse it? And then we can just do this in a collection runner where we say, now that we've parsed that data, we can store that. And now we can go inject it into this other spreadsheet or we can call, like we can make another send request where we call that other URL, we make a post uh, basically to this call to say like, go past this body, you know, build that dynamic array of arrays, go push that data into our spreadsheet. And then we only have to say like, go get our reports or sorry, go get our status. And then for each of those files, go grab all the data and go push it into that spreadsheet. One thing that, um, that we would have to account for there is we don't want duplicate data in that spreadsheet. So we would have to figure out some way of saying, um, we've already seen this file before. Like, don't go pull that file again. We've already seen like, you know, August 30th. We've already seen August 31st, but we haven't seen September 1st. We haven't processed that file yet. Right. So we might need some way of knowing like which files have we already seen. That might be something where, you know, maybe we make another worksheet down here at the bottom. You can't see it because of my nameplate, but like you can add multiple of these worksheets down here at the bottom. We could maybe make a worksheet that keeps track of like which days have we seen and then inside of this call here, um, we can go fetch that worksheet within our overall spreadsheet. We can go fetch that worksheet to say, go get the list of dates that we've already processed and like sort of correlate in there. Like, oh, this now that we're actually looping through all of these, this date is actually new. We haven't processed this, this date before. Okay, let's go download that file and inject that into our thing. So that way we're not like duplicating our data. Either that, or um, we would just say like erase everything in the spreadsheet, pull all of these files and just inject it every time. Like just make a whole new spreadsheet, inject all that data. Um, and we, it would basically give us like a rolling month to month kind of chart system where we could go in and automate and say, go build charts based on that data. Um, but that wouldn't give us like a year worth of data because again, they're only storing up to 60 days worth yeah. of data. Um, and so we would, at best, we would have a rolling 60 day window of here's the performance of our videos over the last 60 days. Cool. Um, yeah. so, you know, one thing we could do there is say, um, again, we can, we can kind of build some automation around this where, or we could build some apt script inside of Google spreadsheet. Um, because it looks like some of the data that was coming back when we look at this is there's actually a date field in here is we could say, um, you know, once we inject all of those fields inside the spreadsheet, column A would be the date. So we could have an app script in here that we just trigger that says, go find everything that's older than 60 days, pull it into like an archive sheet and just move those, those uh, rows into here. And that way it's only appending like the newest stuff. Um, I don't think we'd be able to trigger that app script from Postman though. Um, Cuddly Wolf is also saying keep, keep an eye out for the 10, 10 million cell limit as well. Oh. Um, so, so yeah. So again, if you've got a lot of videos, because and, and this is the other thing about the combined report is it breaks it down by country. And I think we talked about this on the last stream as well when we were examining the data. Um, it's coming through and it's saying like, go give me the channel, go give me the video. Was it live? Was it on demand? You know, was the person or how many of them were subscribed? But then we had this country code. 
And I think we talked last stream about we would have to actually wrap this stuff up by country because, you know, we as postmen, uh, as far as I know, we don't we don't look at the, you know, how, how well did that video do in America versus, you know, the UK versus Canada versus India versus Japan. Like, yeah. we don't really look at that level of performance. We just look overall, like, how did that video do? And so we probably could go through and as we're like downloading this report and say, just go wrap up all of these things together, like find some way of consolidating all of that. And then we have fewer rows. So now what we would end up pulling down is like for this day, for this channel, this video, we just wouldn't include the country code and we would just aggregate all that data, uh, which would mean like adding up all these other statistics around like, you know, what were the watch minutes and views and things like that. But that might get a little tricky as far as the calculations of, you know, what were the average views and so on? Like you might have to take an average of averages, which then becomes less accurate. Um, you can kind of undo the average if you know, like, so we have the average minute uh, or the average view in seconds. If you know the total number of views and the total number of seconds, you can recalculate that average. Um, and so if we have the number of views and the average, then we can kind of come back and say, what was the total? Um, and then we could like, compile it from there. So there would be a little bit of math involved inside of um, inside of here where we were actually rolling up those stats. But it would totally be possible to like roll that up by country. And then, you know, like Cuddly Wolf was saying, like, you can only have 10 million cells in a spreadsheet. It would help us to kind of aggregate that, um, or at least reduce the number of rows that we're putting in. So that would be that would be another thing to kind of do and kind of roll up and clean up. Um, could we could easily certainly... combine things instead of like a daily view. It could be weekly performance down to the monthly yeah. I mean, scale. We, yeah. I mean, we could we could roll things up. Uh, you know, using that date field that we get. Yeah, we could totally roll things up by uh, by whatever that date is, and we could say, you know, this is week one, week two, or we could just say like this is the last seven days, and just kind of roll everything up on, on those things. Um, Orhan is asking, are we going to share the session? So yeah, these these videos all go up on YouTube, so you'll be able to come back and recall this. Yeah, the same URL that you used right now or can see right now for the stream, it'll be on YouTube. Actually, you're asking from LinkedIn. So yeah, I'll you're asking you from link. LinkedIn. It'll it'll live on LinkedIn for a little while. You can come back and, and watch it as a video on demand on LinkedIn for a little while. But we put all these, we archive all of our videos up on YouTube. And that's that's why we're trying to access YouTube statistics so that we can see like what's the what's the overall uh, sort of view on YouTube after the fact. All right. Well, Kevin, I think this is as far as we're going to get because unless we can actually get yeah. this data, we can't we can't do these calculations, and there's only so much we can actually push in. But we can kind of see like we've got the building blocks yeah, ready to go. We can actually push stuff in. Connected. Yeah, we can actually see it pushing data into that spreadsheet. Um, you know, we There'd got be some scripting in the spreadsheet, like we were saying to um, do some like appending and that, or not appending, but cutting out like older data and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then in Postman, maybe we would use something like Postbot to roll up the data based on the country code. So we're not really storing mm -hmm. it separately. Yeah, for sure. or even that would, be, the, that would yeah. be a great task for Postbot. So again, uh, you should see Postbot down here on the on the uh, console line down at the bottom of Postman. You should have access to play around with Postbot. Um, and it's just a, a generative AI it's uh, AGI that you can kind of give it a prompt and it'll try to generate some code for you based on what you're trying to do. Um, the other thing that we were thinking about last stream is when we were looking at these YouTube reports is it's only giving us the video ID. It's not giving us the title of the video. And so the other thing that we would have to look at is how do we go get a list of all of our, of our videos from YouTube and maybe put that on a second sheet so that when we're building the charts, we have a list of like this, this video ID equaled this title and maybe the description so that when we're back on this other sheet where we see all the statistics, then when we come in, we can kind of correlate, okay, that video ID was this title. Um, that, would be, that would be another good thing to kind of do. Um, or if there would be a way, I mean, we could even do that inside Postman. You know, if we're making that other call, we just like keep that in Postman in memory. And then as we're looping through this, we can just look that up within Postman. Um, and that way, what we inject in the spreadsheet, instead of the video ID, we could actually put the video title. Um, or yeah, I, 
Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I would probably organize it where we just had a different sheet at the bottom that was just, here's the list of videos, all the titles, all the descriptions and the dates and so on, like that metadata about the video. And then the main spreadsheet uh, sort of worksheet where you're putting all the statistics, then you can just correlate those as you're building up those graphs. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, we basically set up the framework. It's just some of the specifics that you have to kind of work out for our specific use case. Right. Now, the title the title of our video today was that we were going to automate this using flows. Um, so I know you and Debo, when you started this, like back in, uh, was it late July, early August, you were A looking at how ago. to use... Yeah, you were looking at how to use flows for this. Um, now that we've got these building blocks, that's the nice thing about flows is we can always come in now that we have these requests is we can actually pull in these requests as blocks inside of flows and build a workflow out of this. Um, it's just, we wouldn't have to necessarily tell flows to like take the data from this and feed that as input to this next one. Um, because this, this, uh, process is already storing, you know, the, the job ID as a variable and, and we, you know, we can come in and write code that says, go grab that spreadsheet ID and save that as a variable. But we only need to create that spreadsheet one time. We only need to create that job one time. So like right. these things we only have to do once. So I can kind of move this up here and like, these are the things that we need to do on a regular basis is just these last three. We need to go get the job status. So we get all those files. And then inside of here, we're downloading each file. And then we call this one to actually push that into the spreadsheet. So the flow, like the, if we were to go into flows, it would literally be two blocks because we've already, yeah. like, you only have to manually do the, the other things one time to go create a spreadsheet, go create the job. Um, and then it'll also like, be pretty easy to set up a monitor for this. Just to yeah, run that, this, say like every day or something like that. That would be really ideal for sure, and that's and that's part of why we started restricting how many times you can manually click on that you know collection run button is because we want to we want you to use monitors, we want you to use you know Postman CLI or Newman to like automate these things because it's expensive for an employee to like spend their time to come in here and like manually click that button. So we want to help your organization out by helping you learn about automation tools. And uh, so we kind of want to push you toward that automation. So I think, uh, yeah, we could totally set up a monitor to do this on a daily basis. But again, I don't think we need to do it as a flow because again, it's just going to be two blocks in that flow and we're not really passing data from one into the other. Um, it's just they need to happen, you know, one after the other, like sequentially. Right. And we can just use the collection runner for that, uh, which means that we can set that up as a monitor. So... All right. Well, I think uh, I think Kevin, this is as far as we can go uh, because we don't actually have any data in those yeah. files. There's not much else that we can we can do from here. Um, but we were able to actually push data from here. Like we went in, we had we had our body with our usernames, and we could see that when we pass this over here, um, we see on sheet one we're actually inserting those usernames over here. So we know that that does work. So the append actually works the way we want it to as well. Yeah, which is really nice. I was because when I was playing with this on my on my personal account and I had an empty row, it just started appending at that point and like overwriting old data. Yeah. I'm like, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> so it looks like it's it's being a little more intelligent about that now. So we can just keep hitting this as much as we want, and it's just going to keep appending that data. So, um, so we've got the building blocks. Now it would just be a matter of like, how do we actually get the data out of those files that we can finish automating from there? So hopefully this was helpful for folks to kind of see our process of like, here's how we're thinking, here's what we might need to do. Uh, but the fact that we can do all of this inside of Postman and that Google OAuth isn't really as scary as, uh, as people think. You know, I mean, we read here... that pretty quickly. Yeah, like you just have to know how to set up all these things. And and Debo's blog post, uh, oh, yeah. again, is is like a really good sort of step-by-step. -step. Like here's how to set all these fields. This is exactly what you need to set. Uh, the main thing here is like setting these scopes. So it's not just your authentication, but it's also like, like what data do you want to request of the user that they can go access? And then um, this has to line up with whatever APIs that you're trying to call at Google. But then you're yeah you're basically acting as that as that person you come down here and you get a new access token down here at the bottom I know my nameplate's kind of covering it but this, the orange button down here at the bottom will refresh that or it'll get that initial token for you but um, the the trick that we talked about last time is when we look at um, the auth URL so this is one change that we made from Debo's 
blog post. Gabo's blog post basically said, put in this URL as your auth URL, which is accounts.google.com slash o slash oauth2 slash v2 slash auth. If you also add this access type equals offline, then Google sends a slightly different auth token that includes what we call a refresh token. Without this, Google will still give you a token, but it won't include a refresh token. But if you say, I, I want an offline version of this token, then it sends a refresh token. And when Postman sees that, um, basically there's a setting in here that says like, go automatically refresh my token. Uh, let's see, where is that? There's a setting in here to automatically refresh that token. I think it's oh, auto, buried yeah, below, buried. yeah. Yeah, it's just buried under underneath this. But there's a, there's a checkbox in here that says like, go automatically refresh that token. Um, and... and it, you know, you can come in and you can manually, like you can turn that on. Um, but you have to have this access type equals offline set as your auth URL. And then you get that refresh token and then Postman can refresh that token for you indefinitely. Um, now that refresh token can also expire. So like when I came in today and we hadn't touched this in a month, that didn't work. I actually had to go through like the whole authentication thing all over again to get a new token. But now I could continue working in Postman like all day long, even though this auth token is only good for like an hour or so or whatever ex expiration Google puts on there. Um, but because we're doing this offline version of the token, we get that refresh token, which means Postman's going to automatically refresh that for you. So we're trying to build little nice things like this into the interface just to make it more convenient for you to where yeah, you know, suddenly you're trying to access that thing and it suddenly it doesn't work. It's like, oh, I got to go in here and manually refresh that token. We're, we're trying to find ways of making that a little bit nicer for you. So we can come in here, we can turn that uh, that setting on and it'll refresh that token for you. So, so hopefully that was helpful for folks. Um, maybe Kevin, can we share uh, Debo's blog post again? Yeah, for sure. Uh, with, with folks, um, just so you can kind of see what that setup is going to be. And then uh, I'm going to go back over to our blog and our community events, and we'll kind of start wrapping up here. So um, definitely so check out our last stream where we went over all the part one to this, where we set up the Google OAuth for YouTube and introduced the, I guess, challenge and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, this is actually the third one that Kevin's been a part of where we're like trying to do all this stuff step by step. So initially, we were going to try and put all this stuff into Airtable. That was the initial video that uh, Kevin and Debo were doing. And then after that, we realized like oh, Airtable actually won't give us the charts that we want to see. And so let's let's figure out like how can we push this into uh, into a Google spreadsheet. And so that's where Kevin and I were yeah. kind of like, well, let's go let's go, you know, deep dive on Google APIs. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Airtable, but the charts just aren't really there yet. <laughs> Google yeah. spreadsheets have a lot more flexibility in the dimensions that we can display and how kind of look at the data. So yeah. That's why we went that way. So definitely go check out the Postman blog because, again, we're posting lots of really interesting stuff. Like Debo just did another thing on like PKCE um, and uh, he's done some other stuff around like OpenID and like really going into like the the finer details of like authentication with APIs and so on. Uh, Mina just wrote up a, a summary uh, of, you know, how our team was out of GraphQL Conf. I was actually at GRPC Conf at the same time. Um, and then I did a, a recent post on serverless and can we build a serverless API? What are some considerations there? But our whole team is like building stuff like crazy. Jean Yang uh, was the founder of Akita that we acquired back in the summer. Um, and Jean has been writing a lot of really great blog posts as well. Um, so definitely go check out all the stuff that Jean has been writing. So definitely keep an eye on our, on our blog. We've Got just tons and tons of stuff. Again, if you're going to be at API World in a couple of weeks, come by and say hi to us. Um, there's going to be like a little event with the awards ceremony and so on. Um, but definitely go check out our community forum as well. Um, I've got a few things I need to post in here uh, for some upcoming events that I'm going to be at. But definitely go check out um, any of these events. If you're going to be at like GitHub Universe, if you're going to be at like AWS reInvent, um, TechMids, Nordic APIs, um, you know, there's lots of stuff going on all around the world that, that our team is going to be at. So if you it's happen to be cool. at any... Sorry, it's also cool that anyone else can share the events that they're kind of participating in here as well. Like a lot of the supernovas yeah, share sure. events that they're hosting or attending in this channel. It's not just Postman. Like right. that fun with chat GPT API is uh, one of our supernovas and they do a webinar. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I think that's like their second part or third part they've done so far. 
This one's part awesome. two, though. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Fabian. Um, so yeah, I mean, any any kind of event, like we're we're gonna post uh, we're gonna post this stuff in the events forum. But this is also a great place just to go ask for help. Like, yeah, you know, I'm stuck on this thing. This thing doesn't work. Like, what do we do here? Um, there's lots of different categories where you can come in and you can tag things. Uh, you can look up other people's questions. So it's it's a little bit like Stack Overflow in that regard too. You can kind of see like what other people are doing. Um, the other thing that we need to really uh, highlight is our upcoming intergalactic. So if we look yes. at Postman intergalactic. October 25th, we're talking about the VS Code extension. Yeah. So this is going to be like a huge deep dive just on the VS Code extension. Like what is it? How do you install it? How do you use it? Um, we're going to walk you through absolutely everything there. So definitely want to check that out. It's free to register. Uh, won't cost you a thing. And if you register, Zoom will send you a link afterwards for the recording. We also put that up on our YouTube channel um, if you can't register for it. But we're basically going to do a whole deep dive on what this VS Code extension is all about. Um, so definitely don't want to miss that. We're going to have a yeah. whole bunch of folks like uh, like Geary's going to be there, Pankaj is going to be there with Pooja. Um, and they're just going to do a whole deep dive on like how to access everything uh, you know, updates to it over time and, and so on. We've actually well, seen so quite quite a lot a really of downloads good. of it and so on. So we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, and it's, it's also a really great place, even though we're providing the video afterwards to ask your questions because yeah. you have people on hand to answer them live for you. Yeah, we do live Q&A on all of these. So definitely come back and check that out. Um, Wednesday, October 25th, I probably won't be there to help moderate because I'll be at API World that week. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can drop in on that one. We'll see. I think it's early enough in the morning. I could probably, you know, hang out on that and then go over to the conference from there. So uh, you'll probably see me in chat as a moderator on that day. But definitely go register for this. Um, even if you can't attend live, you'll get a link from Zoom, so you'll get it a little bit faster than it'll be up on YouTube. But uh, but like Kevin said, if you if you register and you go to the webinar, then you can ask questions live. Um, and you can get like live updates from the Postman team and the moderators and so on for any question that you've got about the VS Code extension. So we'd love to see you there. Definitely check it out. Uh, Kevin, anything you want to kind of shout out? Anything else you got going on? Oh, uh, no. I mean, the Supernova program, I'll drop a link for that. But uh, again, like if you like creating content like this or hosting meetups, going to events and that kind of stuff, um, definitely check it out. Uh, we are always recruiting new people and uh, yeah. So Kevin, give us, give us like a, you know, we got a little bit of time here. Give us like a, a, you know, explain like I'm five, like what is a supernova? Who can be a supernova? Like, do you have to be a student to be a supernova? Can it just be anybody that uses Postman? Like, tell us a little bit more about that. The elevator pitch. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> sorry to put uh, you on the spot, but like, you no, know, let's, yeah. let's explain it. We got, we got a couple of minutes. So. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, like, you can't be a student. We have a whole different program for that. Um, yeah. But you could also Google the student expert or student leader program. There's, like, three different positions there, um, I believe. I'm not really the expert on that area. But the Supernova program, um, this is mostly for people that, uh, like it says there, help empower the API developer and tester community. So it's an ambassador program. You attend events to talk about Postman and APIs, or you create content, whether that's a video or a live stream like this. Maybe you host webinars like uh, Fabian had done, or blog posts and articles. We had all sorts of stuff from people. And um, essentially, that's all you do. Once a quarter, you do some sort of contribution for Postman, and you get to be a part of this awesome community of people. Awesome. So yeah, definitely check that out. If you're if you're a big fan of Postman, you want to run some meetups or whatever, um, definitely definitely look into that Supernova program. Um, Kevin, do we do we like send swag or anything to the Supernovas if they run an event? Like, do we send them socks or stickers or anything? We do. Yeah. yeah. So Sweet. when you join the program, we send you like a welcome bundle. Uh, I'll try to keep that secret, but you get a bunch of cool swag, <laughs> and then. Uh, I, for as long as you're part of the program, say six months or a year, you kind of get new stuff, you get more exclusive things that um, you may not even find at a Postman booth. Um, and then say, for example, you're hosting an event or you're going to go to an event and you want to hand out, say, stickers or T-shirts, we'll send stuff to you as well, of free, of course. But um, yeah, there's a lot of support there. Yeah, that's awesome. 
so yeah, we want to support you as best we can. If you if you're going to go through the effort to like set up a you know a major event that's highlighting Postman and centered around Postman again to kind of help out the developer and tester community, uh, definitely check out the Supernova program. And uh, yeah, you'll get to interact with Kevin and others on the Postman team about that. So we got a lot of really awesome. great people. Yep. Good stuff. Well, Kevin, thanks for uh, thanks for going through the uh, the Google OS stuff with me. Like I said, I think we've got good building blocks that you know we can continue Definitely. to work on this offline and actually automate like for real. We can automate some of our uh, our stats now. We just got to figure out how to populate those files properly, and we'll be good to go. Um, so again, hope this was helpful for folks. Uh, we're always happy to take feedback. So if you're watching this on YouTube later on, please leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we don't have another live stream scheduled yet. Um, but I think we're going to, we're going to change our cadence to once a month. So I think we're going to do another one in about a month. Um, so it'll be sometime in November because our team is traveling quite a lot in Q4. So, yeah, um, so we, we have to, yeah, so we have to kind of, uh, space these things out a little bit over like late Q3, early Q4 is like when a lot of tech conferences happen. So our, our team is traveling quite a lot, but I think kind of on an ongoing basis now, I think we're going to do our live stream once a month. And uh, you'll probably see some different faces. We're going to try to get some some other friends of Postman, folks that really like using Postman, uh, and do a little bit more around like fireside chats and talk about post practices and things like that when it comes to development and testing and security and all that kind of stuff. So we're looking forward to having some different folks on the stream. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out. Definitely follow if you're on uh, Twitch um, or if you're on um if you're on YouTube, give us a, a subscribe. Turn on those notifications so you know when we're going live. And uh, we'll catch everybody. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be like week two of November, I think, is when we're talking about planning the next live stream. So we'll get uh, we'll get some information out. So definitely follow us on LinkedIn as well. If you're on LinkedIn, uh, definitely follow Postman over there as well. And uh, we'll, we'll make sure everybody's notified. So thanks again for hanging out with us today. Uh, Kevin, we'll catch you later on. And... Uh, yeah, I think that's it. We'll wrap up. See you soon. Have Thanks, day, everyone. everyone. Cheers.